Today we're going to talk about dark energy. We expect that the rate of expansion of the universe would slow down because of gravity. We know that gravity is a force of attraction between all particles and also we know that there is dark matter which increases the gravity so there's lots of forces of attraction pulling everything closer together which makes the initial expansion from inflation and from the Big Bang makes this expansion slow down and this is what we observe and I'll talk about how we can observe that just in a, in a minute. But that seems to be the case for the first seven and a half thousand million years. However, after that, something very strange happened. The expansion began to increase. This is very surprising. And this observation can be explained by the concept of dark energy. So before we had dark matter, now we have dark energy. So first of all, what is the evidence that the rate of expansion of the universe is increasing? Let's take it step by step. We know that light travels at a fixed speed in the universe. This is part of the limitations of space-time. We can use our powerful telescopes to look at distant objects and therefore the radiation that comes to us from those objects must have started out in the past and the further away they are, the further in the past they were. So we can look back into history by using telescopes. By measuring the red shift of the light or radiation that comes from these objects, these distant objects, we can measure their speed, the speed that they're travelling away from us. Therefore we can measure the rate of expansion, we can measure the distance to these objects and, we, or, and therefore the time when they existed and we can measure how fast they are moving away and that's how we end up with the graph that I've just shown you. So that's the evidence that the universe is expanding. So what about dark energy? Well, the first, I, the first reason that people pro proposed dark energy was these observations of distant objects. These objects were actually supernovae, exploding stars, which we'll talk about in a later episode. So that's the first piece of evidence. But there are other pieces of evidence also supporting the idea of dark energy. We've looked at the cosmic microwave background radiation. It shows that the coloured images show that there are small ripples in the structure of space and these were the ripples at the beginning um, soon after the Big Bang but in fact those ripples probably still exist. However the ripples are very small and space is almost perfectly flat. It's like, again, a mattress. We go back to the idea of uh, space as being curved by heavy objects within it, which is what creates force of gravity. It's like uh, objects pressed down into a mattress. The, the dimples in the mattress are relatively small. Most of the mattress is still almost flat. And it's the same, apparently, with space. Space is almost flat. Now, theory says that for space to be flat, there must be more energy than we have found in the visible matter and even in the dark matter. Those two together do not give us enough energy to explain why space is flat. So that's the second piece of evidence that points towards the existence of something we call dark energy. 
if we try to work out how did the large scale structure of the universe occur. Now we haven't talked about this so far in the story, but well, it turns out that the, uni that the universe is made of or consists of stars which are organized into galaxies, galaxies are organized into clusters, clusters of galaxies are organized into sheets surrounding large almost empty spaces. That's the structure of space-time in a nutshell. In order to explain how that structure arose, we need to propose that more energy exists. The energy of matter and dark matter is not enough to explain this structure. So there are various, various strands of evidence that point towards the existence of dark energy. So the energy in the universe consists of the visible matter, which is about 5% of the energy, we think, of the energy that exists in the universe. The dark matter, which we've already talked about before, it comprises about, we think, 20, about 27% of the total amount of energy in the universe, and the rest about 68% is this dark energy. So it's about two-thirds of all the energy in the universe. So what is it made of? Well, there are various theories. One of them is that it comes from the cosmological constant. This is a fundamental property of space and it causes a gravitational repulsion. Einstein first proposed it in order to explain why the universe did not collapse under its own gravity. He said it, this space consists of some repulsive force, which he called the cosmological constant. He couldn't explain it, but he put it into his equations. He later thought that this was a mistake when he found that the universe was in fact expanding. We've already seen that a, a force of repulsion existed during inflation before energy was frozen into particles. It could be that this repulsive force of space actually exists and causes this increased expansion of the universe. So that's one possible explanation for where this dark energy comes from. But there are others. A second one is to propose a field which is called quintessence and quintessence is supposed to explain dark energy. But we have no idea what this quintessence consists of. A third theory is that general relativity itself changes as you look at larger and larger scales in the universe. So the law, Einstein's laws work well on a local scale, but on a big scale we need something different. Another idea is string theory. String theory is a complex mathematical theory which claims to explain many different things, one of which is dark energy. And another possibility is that dark energy is somehow linked to dark matter, neither of which we explain so the explanation for them both could be linked together. So thank you for watching and if you like this story you might like Time Crystal which is the history of the universe as a work of fiction. Timecrystal.co.uk